Welcome to our review on metallic structure. The first thing we actually need to recap on are the properties of those metals. So all of the metals that we've encountered have actually had a few properties in common with each other. So they've been good conductors of heat, good conductors of electricity, they're shiny, they're strong, and they're malleable. And that just means that we can obviously change their shape by bending them quite easily. Another property that we haven't really mentioned much is that many metals have what's called a high tensile strength. All that means is that if we try and pull on the ends of the metals, they resist being stretched quite well. So that would be a property that would make them very good, for example, as cables on bridges, because we don't really want the cable stretching because otherwise, obviously, the bridge moves too much. So having a high tensile strength is useful when using it in developing bridges. This is an example of a typical question that we're going to see related to our metals and their uses. So what you'd get is a data table with a lot of information about materials used for perhaps making cars or it could be any other function. Then they're going to actually ask you which material would be best for a particular thing. In this case, making wheel rims. And you'll have to explain your answer. What they're looking for you to do here is think about the properties that would be most beneficial for that particular use. So if we're looking at obviously the wheel rim, then having a look at the different options we've got there, we've got the appearance, the density, the melting point, the relative strength and the cost per ton. You need to pick out which ones would be the most related to its particular uses and wheel rim. So obviously something like its melting point isn't actually that vital for a wheel rim on a car because when you actually look at those values then the lowest melting point is 160 degrees celsius and there's not many roads around the world that we could say would get to that temperature so that's kind of an irrelevance to be honest the only ones we're really worried about would be things like their relative strength their density which would have an effect on the performance of that particular vehicle so do look at the question carefully identify what the actual purpose is and think about what properties would make it useful. So there will be some in there that are kind of an irrelevance, kind of like a red herring if you like, that have absolutely no bearing on whether it be any good for that use or not. They're just in there to pad out and see if you can select just the useful ones. So don't think you've got to talk about them all. You will be talking about just the ones that are the most useful to back up your answer there. So in this topic, what we've done is we had a look at a few different ways that different chemicals are held together. So when we had a look at our ionic compounds, we found out that they were held together by ionic bonds. Our non-metal compounds are held together by covalent bonds. And now thinking about a metal, they're held together by metallic bonds. So quite a logical name there. When we think about these metallic bonds then, first point to note is that they are strong bonds. So because they're strong bonds, that means that if we think about metals, it gives them the high melting and high boiling points. So it's down to these strong metallic bonds that we have those two key properties of our metals first of all. If we look at the structure in a little bit more detail, we've got a picture at the bottom there that shows us what we're actually talking about. So those grey circles with the pluses in then, the metal ions, and metal ions have a positive charge, hence the plus, and the little red circles around them are what's called a delocalised electron. So electrons, remember, have a negative charge, and the delocalised just means that they're not held in any fixed position. They're actually free to move around that structure. So what we actually find then is that if we look at that, we can see that the positive metal ions are packed nice and closely together in that regular arrangement. And what we'll find then is that as those electrons leave the outer shell of the atoms, we get those delocalized electrons which are able to move around freely. So as soon as the electrons move out of the actual atom, then we get the positive charge on our metal ion and we get our delocalized electron. If we think about another key property of our metals, then we'll think about the fact they can conduct electricity. And the reason our metals are able to conduct electricity is because of these delocalized electrons. So as we said, they're actually free to move. And because those electrons are then able to move around the positive metal ions and therefore through the structure, 
that means it can actually carry a current through the structure itself. Therefore, it will conduct electricity. So if we think about what this metallic bond actually is, we've got positive metal ions and negative electrons. So what we end up generating then is this very strong attraction between those delocalized electrons and the positive metal ions. And that's what the metallic bond actually is. So because we've got this very strong force of attraction between the electrons and the metal ions, then we end up requiring a large amount of energy to overcome it. So because we need a large amount of energy to overcome that force of attraction, then that means that to actually change the state of our metal, we're going to need very high amounts of energy, which means we're going to have a high melting point and a high boiling point.